Hey folks, this is Post Martin, and in this video I want to show you a little bit about sample rate and aliasing, how it happens, where it happens, and how to prevent it. And let's start with a static test tone, one kilohertz sine wave test tone. You can see the peak here. And uh, if we run a project in our DAW with, for example, 44.1 kilohertz sample rate, then Probably most of you guys know that the maximum frequency that we can basically record and reproduce is uh, half of the sample rate, so it's 22 kilohertz. So there is basically a red line, like a brick wall, and no frequencies can be generated beyond that frequency. That's just a fact. <laughs> okay, so now what happens if we create a saturation from this one kilohertz sine wave? We add saturation, and usually, as you can see, these harmonics here, they would continue down, down, down in higher frequencies, but they can't because there's this brick wall. So what happens is aliasing or foldback, and maybe you can see that a little bit, that there is something going on in this kind of direction. Let's have a look. This is just a rough line, so you can see how it basically folds back and creates some kind of weird sounds in the audible spectrum. Now you would say, of course, uh, it's not a big deal because, for example, here, this one would be roughly minus 60 dB or something, so it's pretty quiet. But uh, we will get to this topic because it's not, not uh, exactly like that. Anyway, so that's what happens if we have 44.1 kilohertz sample rate and we add saturation and we get to the limit 22 kilohertz and we get this foldback called aliasing. Now let's run the same project again at 192 kilohertz. So the maximum frequency we can produce is 96 kilohertz. Okay, so you can already see that the saturation I added goes way beyond the audible frequency range of 20 kilohertz or 22 kilohertz for the sake of 44.1 uh, kilohertz sample rate. Anyway, we go way beyond, yeah? So no big problem there. Just a rough line there. You can see how the saturation goes way beyond. Now, in this particular case, it's no problem to use saturation whatever way you want, maybe add a second saturation stage, because we don't get this foldback at 22 kilohertz, we go way beyond the audible spectrum and we can basically low pass this. At the end of our signal chain, we can just create a relatively simple low pass, get rid of all these top frequencies before we sample it back down to 44.1 kilohertz. So let me just move that up so you can see there's the wall but we already have filtered everything out, so there's nothing to basically reflect or fold back. Yeah, That's the technical benefit of using higher sample rates. Yeah, You can get rid of this aliasing pretty easily. And you don't have to take care in every single stage of your mixing. For example, if we talk about the Kemper Profiler, we have basically eight effect slots plus the amplifier slot, which obviously also creates saturation. So we can have up to eight, uh, no, up to nine stages of saturation. And internally, the Kemper does oversampling, then it samples down, oversampling again, duh, down, whatever stuff is going on. And we have a problem with this. <laughs> well, the Kemper is still nice, obviously. I use it all day long. But uh, currently, I've only shown you with a static sine wave, which is not a really realistic thing. So let's start moving a test tone, like a sine wave sweep, to see what actually happens. So that's the next part. Stick around. Now we are back at 44.1 uh, kilohertz sample rate. There's a thin red line here to show this brick wall. <clears throat> and what we're going to do now is we have a look at a sine wave sweep. So I just activate the sine wave sweep and you will probably hear it. So let's have a look. There is a beautiful sine wave going up, 
up, up, up until 20 kilohertz, and then it will start again. It will loop, yeah. And guess what? This is already coming through the Kemper profiler, but all slots are switched off. Everything off. Amp block, cap block, and all other effect slots, everything is off. It's just basically input straight to output. And yeah, looks pretty nice. Nothing bad happening there. But once uh, I start to switch on the amp block, which is a uh, an amp with relatively low gain, it's not extremely high gain, I think it's around 2.0 gain or something. You will see all kinds of wacky craziness going on there. And what's really nice and good to see there is <clears throat> that at the brick wall there is something happening that frequencies go back. <clears throat> they move the other direction. And then at some point they kind of double, they overlap. And there's all kinds of craziness going on. You probably hear that already pretty well. And now what I do with this relatively low gain amp, I will add a camper fuzz so things go even crazier. Let's have a look what happens now. Welcome to the world of beautiful birds chirping all the time. Yeah? I think that's relatively easy to hear. So it's not happening just in the high frequencies. It's actually happening in the mid frequencies as well. Really weird stuff. So let's see and talk about what's going on there. Okay, so now I have uh, activated the amp block on the Kemper profiler. I have turned down the gain to absolute minimum of this amp, yeah, or let's say 0 0.3, something like that. Okay, and the only thing that I changed in terms of creating saturation is <laughs> the presence knob. I increased the presence by 3.3 because I want a little bit air in the sound. So let's see what happens. And uh, here we are in Cubase and we can see the frequency spectrum there's a little bit noise going on very low level and if I pick the guitar just an open string you can see that there is something going on yeah doesn't sound very nice so it doesn't matter for now but what I want you to do is basically look at this region around let's say 11 12 kilohertz something like that yeah and you will see, when I pick the strings and when I bend, basically you will see the spikes here, the main tones, they will go up because I do a bending. But above 11 or 12 kilohertz, they will go down. So they will change the sound because of this aliasing, the foldback. Yeah? So... I just want you to see it visually. You will not hear a lot now, just a little bit. Can you see? Okay, I'll stop it already. <laughs> so you can see that these frequencies or these spikes that are created here on top, when I start bending, instead of moving up, they move down. And that's the effect of aliasing. And uh, obviously it's it's not completely changing the tone. Yeah, It's it's nothing all too serious. I lo still love my Kemper profiler, so I don't have big issues with this. Yeah, But it's not possible to say, like, uh, we can't hear it. Yeah, <laughs> you can hear it. And it's not kind of beyond the, the audible spectrum of elderly people or something. Yeah? We're not talking about 16K up or something. It happens even in lower frequencies. And I just made this uh, simple example of bending a note just to show you visually how stuff folds back. And yeah, it happens. And depending on the sound that you play even if you play for example lots of distortion and you kick in an extra camp of fuzz or something it will be difficult to show it visually yeah 
and it might still sound nice. There's no problem. If something sounds good, it's okay. Yeah, But the effect is still there. You cannot deny that. It's there. And if someone has trained ears and he can compare it with a, with a recording, maybe not by using the Kemper, because that's an internal problem of the Kemper. We cannot get rid of this. Even if we switch the Kemper to 96 kilohertz sampling uh, sampler rate, it won't change anything. It will still be there because internally these problems are created. But if you, for example, you, you just have an amp and a cab and you put a microphone in front and you record it at 192 kilohertz, there will be a difference if you compare it to 44.1 kilohertz because you just don't have this brick wall that makes this aliasing or foldback of frequencies and you can handle this much easier in the final stage of your mixing or mastering process when you create the deliverables, the final files you want to publish on the platform. You can easily filter the high frequencies out and get rid of this aliasing. Yeah, that's what I wanted to show. Hope that was helpful and uh, see you. Bye bye.